We'll be setting up a free Zoho email box with a custom domain name, so you can send and receive emails that look like this for free. If you want a free business email for your domain, this is actually a great way to do it. But keep in mind that since this is a free service, it does come with some downsides. Mainly, you won't be able to access your POP and IMAP settings, meaning that every single time you want to check your email, you'll need to log into the Zoho mailbox on your web browser, because you can't route emails directly to Gmail, Outlook, your phone, or any of the other popular providers. But if this sounds like a non-problem to you, to get started, you can visit zoho.com mail and click on the business email button. Type in your name, a working email address, a password, and your phone number. These are sadly required so bots don't spam up their servers, so you do need a working phone number as well. Finally, let's accept the terms of service and click sign up. You'll get an SMS message with a verification code that you'll need to type in, and after that, here's where we create our business email. First of all, type in the website name you want to use for your email. Keep in mind, you have to own that website name. Since emails and a domain name are two separate services, Zoho gives you the free email box, but you must have a website name ready to be attached to that email server. If you don't have a website name already, I recommend grabbing a cheap one from Hostinger or Porkbun, because the .xyz names usually go from anywhere to like 17 cents a month to $1 a month. So it's quite a cheap deal. Of course, the best in class names like .com ones are a bit more expensive, but you don't need a .com name for your emails to work. A .xyz will do just as well. Since I own emmetbun.xyz, I'll use that. Now, I need to prove to Zoho Mail that I indeed own this website name. This verification is the reason why free subdomains don't work for this. You need to have access to the DNS area, and since I purchased my domain name from Portbun, I can log into the Porkbun account and find the DNS settings there. Then go back to Zoho, copy my verification code, and inside Porkbun or any other domain name registrar or wherever you bought your domain name, I can simply create a new record named txt, the name is at, and the content is my verification code. After making these changes, you can go back to Zoho and click on the verify button. In some cases, it might show you an error, and that's fine. DNS changes aren't instant. It can take 1 minute, or 5 minutes, or 10 minutes to start working. So I'll skip ahead for 10 minutes and just try again. And yep, here we go, works just fine after 10 minutes. Now you can actually create your email boxes. You can choose the name of the email and the secondary part will be your website name. So I'll go with info at emmetbun.xyz and wait for the free email box to be created. Keep in mind, you can create up to five email boxes for free. So I'll click the add button here and go for one more named emmet at emmetbun.xyz. And while we're here, let's go for one more. Something like uh, billing at emmet.xyz. For a free service, this is pretty robust having five different email boxes all with different names. So. Once you're done creating your email account, click on Proceed to Setup Groups. Nothing needs to be done here, so just skip. Then click on Proceed to DNS Mapping. And next to DNS Mapping Options, go for the Configure Manually. Here, we get some DNS records that we need to copy-paste into our DNS area. So let's do that right now. Simply follow the instructions for all of the records. In case of the MX records, the host needs to be an add symbol, followed by the value given by Zoho and the priority number. 10 for the first record, 20 for the second record, and 50 for the third record. This will allow Zoho Mail to route emails that use the domain name you've chosen, and having three of them is like having a redundancy system. If one of the routes fails, there are two fallback systems. And after doing all three MX records, we need to create a TXT record. Again, the name is an add symbol, the value is given by Zoho, 
And the final TXT record we need to create is a little bit different. You need to paste in the name and the value given by Zoho. So the name is not just an ad symbol. Once you're finished, make sure your DNS records do not contain any other MX records other than those of Zoho Mail, or there will be conflicts and neither will work. So your emails will be just dead in the water. In my case, it all looks fine here. So after you're done, come back to Zoho Mail and click on Verify All Records. Again, since these are DNS changes, you might see an error. Just give it like 10 minutes again and try once more. After your DNS settings are verified without errors, you'll be able to skip the rest of the steps and go straight into your email box. Currently, I'm logged in as info at emitbon.xyz, but if I copy this main address here and visit mail.zoho.eu, since I'm on the European data center, I can type in one of the other emails I've created like emit at emitbon.xyz and log into that one instead. This is how you manage all of your email boxes created through Zoho Mail. So if you have employees, simply give them the login info you've created earlier and ask for them to log in using the link provided. Upon first login, they'll be able to change the password to whatever they want instead of whatever you set up as the email box. So we still have some good privacy uh, practices. And from here, it works just like any regular mailbox. Click on the new mail and write whatever you like. As you can see, the email is being sent from the domain name you attach to it. In my case, it's emmet1.xyz. Now, I understand that having to log into mail.zoho.com or mail.zoho.eu every single time you want to check your email is not ideal. There is a way you can partially link this with Gmail, allowing you to send emails from Gmail directly. If you go into your Gmail account, like any account will do, then navigate to settings, click on see all settings, click on accounts and import, and find the add another email address button, then type in your Zoho email. In my case, it's one of the three emails I've created, emmet at emmetbun.xyz, and click next. For the SMTP server, use smtp.zoho.eu or whatever your data center is, it might be a .com one. For the username, input your email again, and for the password, use the email from that email box. Finally, the port is 587 and you should connect via TLS. After doing these steps, you'll get a confirmation email to your Zoho box. Clicking the confirmation will link your Zoho and Gmail accounts and will allow you to send emails from your professional email address using Gmail. But with the free version, you can't check your emails from Gmail. You still need to log into Zoho Mail to do that. So if you are a small business and you're planning to host a website or you're already hosting a website, the better choice for you would be to use the free email that comes with your web hosting plan. I have a tutorial for that right here. This way you can both send and receive emails into Gmail. If you don't have a web hosting account yet, I highly recommend hosting it for around $2 a month. And with the link in the description, you can get an additional 10% discount for any plan. This one purchase will give you a website name, a web hosting server where you can host your website and up to 100 different email accounts that you can send from and receive and fully link it with Gmail. So it's a much better choice than using Zoho Mail. But Zoho Mail works in a pinch if you don't have web hosting or if you never plan to have web hosting. However, if you do want to create a website for yourself and have a full email functionality without limits, I highly recommend you check out this video next where I showcase how to set up a professional website together with emails completely from scratch. So absolutely anyone could do it. My name is Emmet. Good luck creating your websites and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.